Yo, yo, what up, my beautiful dowdies? How's everyone doing today? I'm your host, Fowl. Let's talk about Apocalyptic Shadow. Apocalyptic Shadow is going to be the new endgame mode in Honkai Star Wars. With Pure Fiction and Memory of Chaos, this is going to be put in the cycle as well. What is Apocalyptic Shadow and what can we expect from it? Permanently available after version 2.3 update. What you require to do it, Equilibrium level 3 and above. And we see the gameplay rewards, we get Jades, the Feathers, Character level materials, Nether Puppet event. After you clear Apocalyptic Shadow difficulty 2 for the first time, you can claim the character Shui Yi, Stellar Jades, times 300 and self modeling resin times one as a reward very nice if you haven't checked out the live stream we're going to get a free way ye after you clear difficulty 2 from this mode how to play apocalyptic shadow is a relatively challenging game mode in apocalyptic shadow trailblazers must face materializations of the finality and defeat bosses and formidable foes they have faced before each phase of Apocalyptic Shadow will refresh and offer the materializations of two bosses across four different difficulties. Challenge and defeat two bosses to clear the current difficulty and earn the mode's rewards. Additionally, reaching specific points will also allow you to gain additional rewards. Equilibrium levels will not affect the difficulty and rewards in Apocalyptic Shadow stages. Stages and rewards in Apocalyptic Shadow are regularly updated. That's a lot of difficult words, but basically you just get two bosses across four different difficulties. And then you can challenge them and you have to defeat them to clear the current difficulty and then you earn rewards. Now off the bat, everyone was thinking in the beginning, I was one of them, that Apocalyptic Shadow might have been a hunt game mode. The more we read, the more information we get about it, it is, you know, it's drifting away a little bit, which is a little bit sad in my opinion, because I was really hoping for a hunt game mode. But this is still fun. And if you only have two bosses, I do think hunt characters are maybe going to be relatively good there. So we still have to see how that's going to unravel. But I'm, I'm very excited for this game mode as a whole. Because just doing me Memory of Chaos and Pure Fiction all the time is actually really nice to get another thing in the mix, you know? Runus Embers. Apocalyptic Shadow has its unique rules and there will be different stage effects during battle. Each period of Apocalyptic Shadow has its unique effects that can only take effect within the current period. So same concept with, you know, MOC and stuff. Very, very nice. Finality Axiom. After each Apocalyptic Phase update, various Finality Axiom buffs will be updated for each boss. Before challenging the boss, you can pick one buff for each team. It's actually very cool that you can choose it. It's the same concept as in Pure Fix, you know, you can just choose one of the buffs. In MOC, you just get the buff and you have to deal with it. Points. The stage contains action value timers. The corresponding action value will be deducted after allies or enemies take action. The stage finalization point calculation is influenced by two factors. The percentage of HP left for the boss and the remaining action value after successfully defeating the boss. When you successfully defeat the boss, your points will be equal 100% of the boss HP value and the action value remaining at the time of their defeat. When you do not defeat the boss successfully, you will only get points based on their remaining HP percentage. Each difficulty level contains two battles, namely Node 1 and Node 2. Your final points are the total points earned in both battles. And the highest historical points of the current difficulty will be updated based on the points earned this time. So it's going to be an HP based system where the, you know, the more HP you clear, the more stars you will get. And then you have to do it in a certain time period. Retrying challenges. After finishing the stage, the team that completed the current challenge will be recorded. You can use this set team to separate challenge node one or two in the future. Retrying the challenge will come to the following rules. The members of your team are set and paths are based on their stage during the initial challenge attempt. Levels, traces, and idolons will use their latest states when repeating the challenge. Team members cannot change light cones. They will use the initial light cone they had during the initial challenge. And the light cone will be set to their latest level at the time of the repeated challenge attempt. Should you no longer possess the light cone in your inventory, the light cone's level will be set to its stage during the first challenge. Team members cannot change relics, they will use the initial relics they had during the initial challenge and the relics will be set to their latest level and state at the time of the repeated challenge attempt. Should you no longer possess the light cone in your inventory, the relics, levels and stats will be set to the state during the first challenge. After you have, separ after you have 
separately challenged node 1 and 2, your higher historical points of the current difficulty will be updated based on your total points earned in both nodes. You can also use the swap lineup function to re-edit your team lineup, light count, and relics in the two teams before conducting separate challenges for node 1 and 2. The points for both nodes will reset in this case, but the historical record for the difficulty will not reset. Yeah, so they're really making this, if you do want to redo it, you have to really, with the recording that you made, then you just use what the, the recording was. And if you don't have any certain light cones or whatever, you know, they're just going to put it at the set level and then every time you beat it you know they're gonna update it very just it's a lot of text here but especially when you're going to play it it's going to be very smooth and you're going to get it very quickly hey pause the video right now over 90 percent of you people that watch my videos actually are not subscribed to my channel it would mean a lot to me if you would actually consider subscribing it's free and you can always change your mind after let's continue with the video quick unlock the trailblazers highest apocalyptic shadow difficulty that you passed with three stars will be recorded Whenever a new period starts, the recorded difficulty and all prior difficulties will be immediately unlocked according to your past performance. After performing quick unlock, you can directly challenge the higher difficulty that you passed with 3 stars. Once you have passed that difficulty with 3 stars, all previous difficulties will be immediately cleared with the 3 star rating and all rewards from those difficulties will be delivered. No more than 3 difficulties can be immediately unlocked this way. So it's the same concept if you like, um, when it refreshes, you know, and you go back to MOC and then you just clear difficulty seven and then you get all the past rewards. Same system here for Apocalyptic Shadow. I do think this game mode is really going to unravel and shows its strength when us players can actually try it. But I do think it's going to be very fun. They're going to handpick two new enemies and the more that we go through the story, the more that we play, the more enemies that we actually get and then the more they can put into Apocalyptic Shadow. This, of course, happens with MOC and Pure Fiction as well. But I actually really enjoy that they just have two bosses there. And it's a relatively good damage check to fight these certain bosses. Because some bosses are a little bit more annoying maybe than other ones. And there's probably going to be a lot of cases where one Apocalyptic Shadow, you might stomp the boss fights. And one Apocalyptic Shadow, you might actually not be able to clear it completely. Depending on what characters you have on your account. And this is again one of those moments where you really want to pick and choose characters to help boost your account so you can clear all content. We're just going to get more content and we're going to get more precise content. Let's take the Aventurine boss fight, the, the boss fight a lot of people struggled with. You want probably a lot of defense and a lot of AoE to be able to clear that. If you then take characters that only have a lot of single target damage, it's going to be a little bit more clunky for you. I'm pretty sure that Apocalyptic Shadow is really going to show what your account is able to do. And that is actually a very healthy thing for the game. A lot of people have been speculating or saying that Apocalyptic Shadow is going to be very break loving, that break compositions, that break characters really like to be in here just as much as Pure Fiction likes to have AoE characters. And that's probably one of the reasons, of course, why Firefly is going to be released with this game mode and Ron May as a rerun character. And this is going to be a very good thing to the end of time because let's say there's going to be a new boss fight where just a very random thing where you really want DOT procs then you should probably pick or build a character that can apply DOTs so you can get through this specific Apocalyptic Shadow more efficient. If there's going to be a boss that freezes your team a lot, you probably want some sort of crowd resistance so you don't get frozen so you can actually clear it. All these boss fights have different mechanics and they're going to add way more boss fights with more mechanics. So Apocalyptic Shadows is going to be a very interesting fight to see if you can handle it. The Argenti boss fight and Kokolia boss fight are going to be the first two, it seems. And I'm just very excited to feel it for myself, you know, how it's really going to be. Because we can all, we can read about it all we want and speculate. Unless we actually play it, we can know how fun it is. I want to hear you guys though on what you guys think about Apocalyptic Shadow. If it was a nice surprise, if you didn't expect what they did at all with it. If you think it's going to be fun, if you think it's going to be very bad. If you're sad that it's going to be added in the mix, you know, I want to hear you guys' takes on this and I would love to see what you guys are going to do with this game mode. I think overall it's going to be a very, very fun game mode and I'm just excited to have another way to maybe have a damage check for the teams that you have. I think it's going to be very fun though and I'm super excited to see when it's going to be live with 2.3. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It means the world to me if you could do that. Make sure to join the Discord. We're trying to grow the community even further. If you want to support the channel even further, then become a member. I love you all, and I'll see everyone in the next video. Take care. Peace.